CTO, Corey Holmes, and he was holding up this motor that was uh, in the propulsion system. Now I challenge any of you to pick up your engine or propulsion uh, system by two hands. You can't because it's so heavy, right? And another thing is that these motors, they can convert the electric storage, the electric energy storage to the kinetic energy that's to drive the shaft, the propellers, um, at a much higher efficiency. And that's really the key, the efficiency. So that's part of the innovation. And what I pair does is that our mission is to be the world's most trusted developers of practical, compelling electric airplanes. From short haul cargo to even someday the super, supersonic passenger transport. And so how do we do this? The key is in the energy, the energy source. So our goal is to really develop an energy optimized or total energy optimized <coughs> airplane. Of course, the energy has to come from renewable energy. And so how do we do that? Well, first of all, just by simple rearrangement of your range equation, and many of you are aerospace engineers who do this as a first step, right? And so, the total energy to, uh, for the airplane to fly from A to B for the range is really the total energy, um, is really the range, which is the distance multiplied by the drag, and rearrange that, you can see the range is total energy density, that's not just the value, throw of total energy, but the overall energy, to multiply by the lift to drag ratio. So we've been designing airplanes for more than 100 years, right? Many people know how to make the L over D lift to drag ratio very high, but we haven't done very good in optimizing the total energy density or total energy divided by the weight. So um, how does one do that? So for example, the well-distributed propulsion, um, or even that one, that is the uh, ultimate goal for MCAR for a total electric airplane. That's what we call the tailwind, with the bundle ingestion in the back. And by the way, you can see that replaced the tail. So by doing that, that tail unit, the BLI unit, is performing two functions. One, of course, is the propulsion, and hopefully from the electric energy. And two is replacing the tail function, namely the directional controls, right? <clears throat> so the X57 that we see in some of the previous charts also have distributed uh, propulsion or electric um, propulsor. What they do is that they replace some of the high lift devices, such as your uh, flaps, your slats, by assisting the wing, which you can reduce the size of the wing because um, you don't have to size the wing to the climb or to the maximum lift required. So there's a lot that you can still do for optimizing based on total energy. And if you do it right, you can actually save the energy up to 90%. 90%, that's a lot. And that's just by analysis. But let's look at what's already being accomplished. So we've seen earlier the mention of the stroll, and we've seen the mention of um, the Chinese uh, aircraft. And there are a couple other two seaters already available out there. And um, perhaps uh, the pivot store was really better than this, but this is an estimate comparing to Cessna. So if any of you that are learning how to fly in a two-seater Cessna airplane, you're probably paying more than $67 an hour because the operator still has to pay rent for the hangar, has to pay for other things. And so just simple operating costs uh, $67 over $14 for an electric two-seater. And so that is already an 80%, a proof of 80% reduction in the total operating cost. So that's huge. But don't get too excited because really when we scale this up, does that still remain the 80% or the 90% that we estimated from the previous chart? So how do we do that? How do we do the scale? That's really the key question. And so at Ampere, the way how we scale up is like this, you see. So we start on a six-seater um, by using a Cessna Skymaster. We retrofit the Cessna with our energy system. And then 
a nine seater, 19 seater, 40 seater, and then the totally new airplane. To do this, there's several key enablers. The first one is actually obtaining the supplemental type certificate rather than the type certificate. And um, we'll discuss why. And then secondly, this really allows us to quickly learn through this process and also quickly update according to the new technology available. Because not just the battery technology is changing rapidly, but also the inverter technologies or many of the component technologies in this whole system. And of course, finally, we can do this alone, maybe just on the airplane side, because you operate always in a system. The whole industry is an ecosystem. And one important part is on the infrastructure, because you go to the airport, each different airport, you land at a different airport, you have to charge up at the electric uh, storage devices. So this allows you to do that very quickly, much like the way how Tesla started. They started by retrofitting into an existing car, the Roadster. And so here we can take a look at how the uh, uh, new airplane versus retrofit airplanes to uh, adopt this whole process compare. First, if we look at the design aspect, for the new airplane, of course, they could look really, really fancy, like very futuristic. And so that's one uh, con for the side of retrofit because uh, it's perceived as an old airplane. For example, the uh, Cessna 337 that we use is already, you know, back from the 70s. So it's an old airplane. And also in the design space for the new airplane, it's a brand new open, so you can do anything you want. Well, as for retrofit, you're confined to the airplane that you choose. And for the development uh, cycle time, and that's really the key to why Ampere has made a choice for retrofitting, because cycle time is very, very long for the new airplane. And while well, it's for retrofit, because uh, we're designing just to the system of the airplane, and it's a uh, much shorter cycle time. And overall cost for the new airplane is very high, it's in the hundreds of millions of dollars, while well, it's for uh, retrofit, it's lower, it's an order of magnitude lower. Still a lot of money, but magnitude lower. And the regulatory requirements, we heard a lot about that this morning, uh, but the big difference is Type certificate for the whole airplane because you have to con consider everything the airframe, the structure side, the structure systems, the interaction, and all that, while it's the ripple fit is mainly the supplemental type certificate. And then the new technology insertion for developing a brand new airplane, a lot of the parameters are set in the beginning, so you're committed. Yes, you can change halfway, but that's going to cost you more time and more cost. For retrofit, it's very limple because that's the whole idea, you know, you retrofit to do something. And then there are um, customers. The customers is what we do all this for, right? Customers have already flown some of the existing airplanes, so it's proven. Even though the system part is different, but the, the um, appearance to them is something that they can accept. They already know the airplane. Well, it's the unproven design looks fancy, looks futuristic, but who wants to be the first one to try? Only the brave ones. <laughs> and of course, some unique benefits for the new airplane, you can achieve higher efficiency because the whole design space is open. While it's for the retrofit, there is also a advantage that you're not generating any carbon dioxide when you're pro producing the airplane, unlike in the new airplane, brand new airplane itself. So our first airplane is a 337 retrofitted. Um, it's a totally inline propulsion uh, system. And uh, so we took out one of the, um, the existing combustion engines, in this case the rare one, which is what we did uh, that already flying. And so we took that one out, retrofitted with our power powertrain system. And then we have a uh, battery pack on the bottom here. So this battery pack is such that we can uh, go to the airport and swap out the battery that's used and swap in the battery that's already charged. So the charging time is not going to be a big factor. And um, so as you can see, our logic here is to try to design the airplane from inside out, from small to big, from inside out. And so that's our first airplane. 
And um, this is one of our next ones. And uh, we're working with NASA on this. It's a newly awarded project for NASA. And yes, you guessed right, it's a twin otter airplane. And so we have three different uh, architectures for studying uh, the traits uh, for this. So uh, what we do is that we swap out the existing PT6 uh, turboprop engines and swap them to the continental diesel engines, which uh, have less uh, power. However, we have the electric parts, um, uh, propulsors on, on those three. One of them is that electric power on the nose. The other one is a parallel architecture together with the continental engines. And the last one is the propulsor on the, on the wing chip. Um, so that all together, they produce one megawatt of uh, power for the whole system. So this is our 19 seat uh, passengers uh, airplane. And next, for the all new electric tailwind, which we adopt to do the uh, bundlery ingestion. So this is a uh, very excellent paper um, from ICAST, the National Council of Aeronautical Sciences, and the paper was uh, written by uh, people from um, uh, uh, Luxart uh, organization and published in 2012. So they can, they, remember we talked about uh, uh, airframe and propulsion integration because that really enables you. The, the better you do that, the more total energy optimized you're going to get for the airplane. So there are several configurations over there. You see that they have studied. But basically, they have concluded that by using a modular ingestion, which is uh, the, the one that with the uh, frame on it. So that one actually saves you the most power in terms of the overall propulsion. And then here you see this picture. Actually, this picture was just in the news yesterday from uh, Aviation Week. And it's a, a NASA concept. Basically, um, they propose that this configuration will be more efficient than if you just have a round one, around one round one around the fuselage of the airplane. And um, because of the mixing. So we're working with um, various uh, institutes on that. Now one of them is the uh, Hexberg group and AVIC uh, on the uh, DLI for that airplane. And then uh, we also work with uh, ICARNA, which is a, a MRO uh, group in the US, uh, in Nikola, in Southern California. And we work with Continental uh, uh, Aerospace Technologies on the uh, uh, propulsion, particularly the parallel uh, hybrid. Um, on the right, you see is the electro arrow. So they produce these chargers, and so uh, high voltage chargers. And so we work with them on that. And also, um, we mentioned earlier on all the different uh, standard groups that um, our uh, regulatory groups are talking about here. And so when you charge, for example, your airplane flight to uh, China or airplane flight to Europe, um, you don't take the different uh, chargers with you. Like here, we, we want to charge our uh, cell phone. We have to change the charging unit and so on. Um, so we also work with our customers. So uh, one customer is local LA Airlines, which is the uh, airline that's uh, in uh, Hawaiian Islands. And they also have some operation in the mainland as well. So uh, our next project is to go fly with Mocha Lele and supported by the Elemental uh, Accelerator, flying these uh, Cessna 337s by the Mocha Lele airline pilots. And the main purpose for doing this is a mar market study. And also we want to work with the local uh, uh, infrastructure groups to ensure that everywhere we land, we can actually charter uh, airplanes and so on. So um, that's all very exciting. And as we mentioned just now, we work with all the uh, standards groups, as well as the um, rule uh, rulemaking on um, the regulatory agencies. And uh, another group here, you can see on the lower left-hand side, are these uh, airports groups. We work with them so that we can ensure whatever airplane that we have uh, designed, the charging units are consistent with what they will build at the airport and will be compatible. Um, so, Speaking of airports, and just now we heard a lot about the new airports and opportunities in China. So China is already the world's largest aviation market. And I would, I would actually predict that China will be the biggest electric airplane market as well. 
And why do I say that? Because the electric airplanes right now are already starting to get into the regional flight market. And just look at this map, you can see a lot of opportunities. And in particular, on the whole west, western China, there's a lot more opportunities here for the new airports. And just now we heard from the Czech uh, speaker that um, the whole Chinese uh, map here is to use 20,000 airports rather than just the 500. Um, so that's all very exciting, and it's a really uh, great opportunity for China to leapfrog into sustainable aviation rather than building more of these uh, traditional uh, uh, energy fuel based on fuel and uh, combustion engines. Um, so China has already started um, in the Daqing uh, Airport, and this is an article that actually says that 10% of the airport's energy will be renewable. And so this is pretty exciting because this is uh, you know, the first major, major airport because China, is, uh, this airport, the, the Beijing airport is already the number two busiest in the whole world. And so this is really showing an example, leading by example um, from China. And on the left, you see some of the other airports um, in the US and Europe, for example. A lot of solar, a lot of the wind are being used because you're going to make electric airplanes, and if the electric airplane is still charging from the grid, then uh, if your grid is still generating the power by conventional means instead of renewable energy, you have to really solve the problem. Um, so here in China, Ampere is actually uh, teaming up uh, with the local uh, groups, and so we're in um, Tianze, which is a small town near Hangzhou. And so this is uh, where we're based, and we have a hangar, but so far we don't have an airplane there yet. As soon as we get our uh, airplane STC, we want to be able to uh, do some manufacturing and development there. <coughs> and uh, here's the uh, video of our 337, with uh, the rear engine being our uh, uh, electric power plant that's uh, changed, changed out. So the flight was conducted in Southern California, and um, that was, uh, we first flew in May, and then we flew uh, with a press present, everybody was there uh, in June, and it was a successful flight. And so far, we've already uh, flown uh, with the maximum uh, time being an hour and two minutes or something like that. So uh, it's being just uh, used as developmental type of a uh, flight. And so here I'd like to uh, just leave you with some thoughts, and this is what in English you call take away. I don't know how to translate that, but one thing again. So electric pro propulsion is really transforming aviation, not just for the future, it is now, it is happening right now. And uh, the approach that Ampere has taken is that we're developing a practical, compelling electric aircraft. And our approach is very pragma pragmatic, uh, particularly for, from the scaling and from certification perspective. That's why we use the retrofit to start and eventually go to all electric brand new airplanes. And we work together with a lot of global partners. Um, by the way, I'm the senior VP of Global Partnership. And uh, you may wonder, what does this do? You know? <laughs> As our whole company, we have only 15 employees. Even now, we have an airplane that flown, that's flown, but uh, only 15 employees. Because we don't want to grow so much um, uh, organically, uh, because we realize that there are lots of great experts around the world, and we should team up in order to develop, rather than just having a big team. Uh, especially, it's so expensive to uh, develop an airplane. And um, here in China, particularly, there's a really unique opportunity to uh, leapfrog the rest of the world in going to the sustainable aviation. And with that, uh, I thank you for your attention. I think I helped uh, bring back the uh, schedule here. Uh, just a, a quick word on the team here. Um, about half of 15 people, about half of the team, come with a background of electric uh, EVs, electric vehicles. And the other half come from the aerospace side. Okay, thank you again. Thank you, Susan.